If Kiev receives permission to launch Western long-range missile strikes 300 kilometers deep into Russia, more than 80% of Russian combat aircraft will not be able to carry out combat missions in Ukrainian airspace. Ukrainian military and political observer Alexander Kovalenko expressed confidence in this. The offensive capabilities of the infantry without air support will be undermined by 30% of the total fire potential, taking into account the specifics and effectiveness, he said. The expert insists that the claims of Western partners that it is pointless to strike Russian airbases with long-range missiles because all aircraft have been withdrawn are a lie. According to him, if the Su-25, Ka-52 and Mi-25 were at airbases outside the 300km zone, they would not be able to carry out their combat missions on Ukrainian territory due to their limited range. Therefore, any talk about withdrawing these aircraft from this zone is a lie. A lie washed in blood every day. After suffering heavy losses during the first month of the invasion, the Russian Air Force had long kept its distance from the Western anti-aircraft defenses deployed by Ukraine. But Russia now appears to be putting its pilots at greater risk to support infantry on the ground. Russians strengthened the role of the Air Force and they're trying to keep up the momentum, says General Dominique Tricond, the former head of the French military mission to the UN. Naturally, the more planes in the sky, the more opportunities there are to shoot them down. What's more, when pilots provide ground support, they are forced to descend in altitude, a vulnerability that the Ukrainians are probably taking advantage of. If this Russian air effort is costly, it also seems to be paying off for ground troops on the front line. By approaching targets as closely as possible, Moscow's air force is increasing the effectiveness of the powerful glide bombs fitted to its Sukhoi fighters. These guided munitions, capable of flying long distances to the front lines, have reduced the risk of Russian aircraft being shot down. Dropped precisely, they can easily destroy the underground bunkers sheltering Ukrainian soldiers. Before the war, the Russian Air Force was not known for using guided missiles on the same massive scale as Western Air Forces. In fact, the Russians had a huge stock of standard bombs known as FABs. They grafted small airfoils onto them and added guidance kits to make them much more precise. These bombs weigh between 200 and 1,500 kilograms. When they hit the ground, they do a lot of damage. The military political leadership of Russia is satisfied with the huge losses on the front in Ukraine. Moscow categorically refuses to improve the situation with tactical medicine on the front. This was stated by the Ukrainian collaborator, member of the far-right group, Club of Angry Patriots of the Russian Federation, Yuri Yevich. Yevich was extremely harsh in his remarks against Russian generals descending into insults. He noted that because of Moscow's position, a Russian soldier has almost no chance of surviving on the battlefield. I'll tell you about tactical medicine, battlefield medicine. The lion's share of the seriously wounded die before reaching the hospital. First aid is needed on the battlefield. We've been saying for 10 years, since 2014, since the war in Donbass, that we're not doing shit. A bunch of officials from the Ministry of Defense and all sorts of other departments said they haven't done a damn thing. The war started in February 2022. We offered a ready-made, tested on a bunch of troops, training method. No one wanted to implement it. They offered it for free. Thieves! Scoundrels! You don't know how to do it yourself. Just take what's ready. They didn't want to. Yevich shouted. 
Military medicine is a largely overlooked contributor to military effectiveness, but its effects are playing out in real time on the battlefield. From better field sanitation to mechanized and air evacuation, as well as modern body armor, armies today that take advantage of these changes can not only save lives, but also preserve the strength of their forces. By all accounts, Ukraine has much better military medicine than Russia. Ukrainian forces, for example, are well trained in tactical combat casualty care, a set of pre-hospital guidelines developed by the US military in the 1990s and revised and widely adopted in the early years of the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. US military medical practitioners found that 87% of preventable battle deaths occurred in the pre-hospital setting. Among these, the most by far were dying from hemorrhage. Thus, the Tactical Combat Casualty Care Guidelines focus heavily on hemorrhage with advice on when to apply tourniquets hemostatic dressings and clamps to stem blood loss. Aid from the West has included exactly these type of supplies as well as related equipment such as body armor. Western advisors have also been pushing for the use of whole blood in far forward settings. One reason for Ukraine's medical advantage is that it has welcomed such aid not just since this February but over the past eight years. Since the invasion of Crimea in 2014, Ukraine has been prepping for all-out war with Russia, including on the medical front. Russian forces, on the other hand, lack medical training as well as supplies.